if somebody comes along to me and said, I want half a dozen prototypes making, um, it can take through the traditional method. If I haven't got the, the hobbing tooling, it can take anything from probably eight to 12 weeks to deliver it to the customer. Uh, with, with the collaboration of the software, the Dantine software with the Akuma, uh, we can deliver in three to four weeks if, if we really want to, okay? We're here on the NCMT stand, we've just finished a live stream. Mark, this is making a spiral bevel gear, but this is their entry level five axis. How do you make a bevel gear on a five axis machine and what does it replace? Right, okay, so um, this type of machining of gears on, uh, on a five axis machine won't replace your high volume gear production, okay? What it enables businesses like mine, you know, Richmond Walsh Engineering, we are a transmission a manufacturing company, it enables us to do prototypes, it enables us to do uh, small batches, okay, and to deliver to the customer in the matter of you know, three to four weeks, whereas if a customer comes along and he wants a sample making or a prototype and he hasn't got the time to wait for it, traditionally we'd have to go and buy uh, the relevant um, cutters, okay, the gear cutting uh, tools, which can take anything from eight to ten weeks. So it gives you the opportunity to, to win work that we, we wouldn't have otherwise been able to, uh, to do. Um, alongside this, we're working with Don Tyne, I know you're gonna be talking to very shortly. Um, we bought their software that integrates with this machine and it allows us to get involved with the design of, uh, of gears. That's enabled us to, you know, to sell, uh, we've sold our consultancy, as a business consultancy, uh, using the software to help help the customer develop his gears for, uh, for axles, for, so it's, it's basically, it's taken a, an axle, uh, off, a, uh, off a trailer to drive uh, a gear train that would actually drive electricity into a battery for a refrigeration unit on the uh, on, a, on an articulated um, uh, refrigerated trailer. It's a bit like a power takeoff on like a tractor Absolutely, or something. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I reckon as a business, we've probably you know over the past 12 months, we've probably missed the opportunity to earn 100,000 pound plus of uh, in revenue through not being able to service customers with prototypes and small batch work in a short uh, space of time and to be able to advise him using uh, design gear design software uh, to show him what he really needs in his uh, in his uh, transmission units himself that is absolutely massive a hundred thousand pounds ish obviously we can't go into specifics but that is just because of is that because of the lead times and also the fact that you have to retool stuff it costs a lot of money can you just spell out what the change in lead times would be going from buying one of these for gear manufacture versus uh, a standard hobby machine okay so a standard hobby machine i mean the, the, the machine's been around for donkey's years traditional machines there are more modern ones which cost millions of pounds uh but um, I suppose the, the lead times, you know, we can talk, if, you, if somebody comes along to me and said I want half a dozen prototypes making, um, it can take through the traditional method, if I haven't got the, the hobbing tooling, it can take anything from probably eight to 12 weeks to deliver it to the customer. Uh, with, with the collaboration of the software, the Dantine software with the Akuma, uh, we can deliver in three to four weeks if, if we really want to, okay? Uh, that is like four, that's a four times, four times, three yeah, times change. And, and I know this is going to uh, please a lot of our customers and it's going to enable us to not turn down work. You know, uh, you know as recent as probably two months ago, we, took, we, we had an inquiry, we had to turn it down, not because we weren't capable of doing it, we just couldn't achieve the customer's uh, lead time. This will enable us to do so. Okay, so that's what you need. You need the Akuma. And I've been told that spiral bevel gears, they're a very accurate product. They do, they're very demanding from di a dimensional tolerance point of view and also from a service finish point of view, which obviously the Akuma can, can handle with thermal comp, and I won't go into all the specifics. Richard Turns has been talking my ear off about all the specific specifics to the Akuma. But without also, you need the software to produce the pro part programs to man manufacture these. So I'm gonna have a quick chat with Mike Fisher, who sells the Dontai software that handles the gear manufacture. So Mike, I know absolutely nothing about manufacturing gears or designing gears. You guys are the software guys, you do it all. Tell me about it, just tell me about everything about it please. Right you are, it's a long story but I'll try and keep it concise. Uh, Dantine Systems has been producing software to design uh, uh, gear systems and also individual components for some time. Our uh, big selling point USB is uh, that we look especially at the manufacturing of complex gears. Uh, we look at the uh, hobbing, grinding, traditional methods, but also 
more modern methods, more flexible methods, such as uh, the, the, the Okuma you see behind you, you know. And uh, we've been very successful in showing how relatively small com companies can take advantage of modern techniques to their cost advantage, but also generate money for themselves, you know. Okay, so can you please explain, very well put, can you please explain to me how there are other CAM systems that are slightly more, the more general purpose, which you might use for turbo machinery, for square parts, which just holes tapped to hold force. What makes gear manufacture special and that you need this specialized software? I understand that. Yeah, it's a good question. And you can see, as you see, even in this hall, there are several companies selling CAM software. And that's good for general purpose. And we don't actually do the whole component. We look especially at the teeth. Now where you, that's because where you might have tolerances of, say, plus minus 50 microns for general surfaces and mating, in the terms of gears, believe it or not, uh, you're talking microns. Sometimes even submicrons can make the difference in performance with noise and uh, stress levels and stuff like that between success and failure, you're talking microns. So with our specialist gear knowledge and, and embedded in the software, we want to make sure that the contact uh, is exact. And you can see how complex some of the shapes go together. Remember, these are going to be rotating under load at very fast speeds. So it has to be really micron perfect. And that's where we have the difference over there. We, we make the tooth contact exact. And that's where some of the CAM systems technically would look at just a, raw, a, a bog standard surface of, of NURBS or, t or, or, or mesh polygons and they would just write a toolpath that goes along those. And if that surface isn't quite right, if it's not, uh, if the, say if the triangles are, are all over the place, the toolpath's going to be all over the place. Whereas I guess from a layman's perspective, you guys will look at the actual analytical, uh, the analytical models under the, the, the numbers and the models under the gears and what lead angles are, what, what spiral helix angles are, rather than just the raw model. And that's the important key to achieving those super tight tolerance. I mean, submicron is a ridiculous tolerance. It is these days, and the high performance, that's what you require. Now, we have had experience of originally we did export models, I just format, step formats, universal for other CAD CAM systems, and they would generate the pass. But it would take maybe a couple of days to, to generate the complex tooth, tooth pass. Our export now just works in a couple of seconds, they have it, and they have it micron correct. Now, the advantage of that is if we generate the G code, is we know it's not changed. So if somebody, if, if we export it, and somebody might want to change it to suit the model, they may want to stretch it out and that will affect the contact. So once it leaves us, it's important not to change it because if you change it in some other system, it might not work. So you check it in our system first, then export it to the machine. So I guess that makes sense to you guys help with the design and the manufacture because there are some cases where uh, say a big, a big manufacturer like Rolls Royce, a big designer like Rolls Royce or Boeing would do it in Katia. They do this big parametric modeling system that export the step file of the, the part they want to make a little aluminium bracket, for example. That would get shot over to a sub subcontractor who just gets this raw bracket and a, and a 2D drawing, and they have to kind of marry up the model, the 2D drawing, the CAM system. It, it's like it's a very um, separated process. Whereas here, you have because and, and, and because the tolerances aren't that tight, they, that kind of works. Whereas now, because the, the tolerances are so demanding, you have to have that real link up between design and manufacture. You're absolutely right. And, and this happens all too much in the industry. Even now, you would think it would be all closely linked, but this is essentially why my business partner, David Palmer, and myself formed on time, because in our previous lives, we've seen that all too often. They were saying, oh, there's something wrong with your software. It's, it's not. It's when you give the export the software to a manufacturer, either, even in-house, but certainly to an external supplier, you might have two or three suppliers, each one of those will do it differently. They might, they might change something that, for good reason, but might change something that's, that's not what you asked for. So it's important for the software, we can simulate all of that and generate the inspection protocols with various machine tools. So, they, so you, the, the manufacturer already has a pattern to work to. They just get on and, and do it. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mike. We've already talked so much. I could probably talk with you all day about this. It's fascinating. I, lo I love talking about this stuff, just the nitty gritty about step files and format, anyway, fantastic. So if you guys need to do some gear manufacture, you're worried about your sub-micron tolerances, you're not achieving them, get in touch with Mike from Duntime Software, he'll sort you out, no problem.